Happy Saturday. It's June 1st. Can you believe that? It happened quickly. It sure happened quickly. <laughs> well, it's another great weekend for gardening. A little warm this weekend, but we've got a beautiful stretch of weather coming up for the next few days. So we've got a great show for you. Peggy's got some of her favorites, perennials today. <laughs> Absolutely. I love the perennials. I, I kind of love the one I'm standing in front of. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's very hard exactly right. to select, That's right. say, 12 or whatever of mm -hmm. my favorites. But I do have some favorites to show you today. Mm -hmm. And some suggestions right. for using them. Kind of focusing on sunny areas today? Yes. Mm -hmm. We're going to. And I don't have a lot of sun in mm -hmm. my garden. There are only two or three areas where I get the required five to six hours of direct sun if you want to grow the perennials. And up front, I'll say to you, anytime you go in and it says full sun, you yes, it'll take full sun, but it will also thrive in most instances with five to six hours of direct sun. So that's what we're going to talk about. You got a couple of pictures. Well, you know, I'd like to bring up a couple of pictures. And actually, these two pictures that I will be showing you were taken by David Culp um, in his garden in Pennsylvania. And David is quite a wonderful horticulturist and has been on the show mm -hmm. with us and done seminars. And we're thinking in terms of what are the plants that are in bloom right now and what will be coming up. And this is a show of his garden, which are uh, borders on each side of a small patch of lawn at this particular time of year right. when there are foxglove in bloom which we treat more as a biennial so always shake those seeds around so they'll keep coming and uh, there's beautiful um, forget-me-nots mm -hmm. in bloom but in, in there yes mm -hmm. the, the bulbs bulbs mm -hmm. always play a major role in the allium right now are gorgeous they are beautiful all those tall stalks oh, yeah. and, um, they're such a vibrant the, color. They really mm -hmm. are, you know. So let's let's take a look at the next picture, and this is wow. midsummer. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. And so in that same small space, you can have this kind of garden. And in that garden now there are salvia. There's yarrow, the yellows. And the taller yellows are some of the Rebeccias. Mm -hmm. So plan ahead. Plan some of those spots that will be a few for spring that are really nice ones. And then go into those that will perform long and well in summer. Right. Now, speaking okay. of summer, tropicals are perfect uh, absolutely. for summer. And, you know, this is a baby. <laughs> This is a baby. Just I, in, I think, didn't they? I, yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. This one is the elephant ear, um, alocasia, colocasia, different types out there. And this particular one, before the season is over, will be taller than I am, and <laughs> each leaf will measure two feet. It's crazy. So it's hard mm -hmm. to realize that, but I know that in the garden that we just saw, David Culp uses tropicals. He uses canna. Mm -hmm. He uses the elephant ears. They are the ones that give that incredibly big foliage right. that really balances out all of the more intricate things and pulls it together. And right now we do have nice cannas and nice elephant ears and even bananas, that type of thing. So this is a good time to go ahead and get them in the garden. That's great. So that's just a little teaser of what all right. we're going to talk about today. Uh, before we get started, I want to mention, we mentioned this the last couple of weeks, but today and tomorrow at our Fair Oaks location, if you're interested in beautiful summer color, roses are perfect for you, and this is the time to see them. The Arlington Rose Foundation is having their 57th annual rose show. Uh, so it's from 1 to 6 today and 11 to 4 tomorrow. Again, at our Fair, Lo Fair, o Fair Oaks location, <laughs> easy for me to say, 12101 Lee Highway in Fairfax, right across from the uh, Costco Plaza there. But there's, and this is what I, it amazes me, there's over 50 categories that, that people are bringing, you know, rosarians and 
everyday people are right. bringing in to to uh, possibly win an award at this show. So over 50 categories, including fragrance and for photography. Right. So if you want to see some spectacular roses, come by and and look at the at the show. It's it is not wonderful. just seeing those roses, and you may have no intentions of growing those particular roses. But but it exposes you to some of this beauty, and she just enjoy looking at it. But every one of those rosarians love to talk to people, and if you go up, they will be happy to talk to you about growing roses. And I'm not a major rose grower. I don't have a whole lot of space mm -hmm. in the sun. Right. But I can't be without a few roses. I, know. <laughs> I, I was telling Peggy before the show it's so nice to have the rose garden because Rob grows, grows roses right. at the house and the other day I was sitting there on the couch and he comes in with this just beautiful bouquet of, of roses. gorgeous roses oh, yeah. and they're always just seems like the first blooms are just huge you know. Just well I think this will beautiful. be a good year yeah. for roses and and so the show should be spectacular mm -hmm. so do do come in and say hello. I'll, I'll be there. All right. Sounds good. good. Okay. <laughs> I'll let you get back to perennials. <laughs> well, we're really not going to go back to perennials okay, at this true. moment. We're going to take a break because we all enjoy cooking healthy foods. We en enjoy now and we're pushed into and not pushed into. That's not invited. The right word. Invited. invited. There you go. To grow these vegetables in our garden, mm -hmm. regardless of how small our garden right. is, even in Which containers, you know, you can grow a pot of basil. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Okay, we went into the kitchen. We're trying to do this fairly often. Okay, organic. Ah, oh, it's so nice to buy the organics when you have to, but to grow them. And, and you're seeing organic tomatoes, it's an heirloom, you're seeing a bunch of uh, cucumbers, uh, picked young, they're so good, um, and a lot of herbs. And so Taylor created this salad out at the Fair Oaks location. It's a Mediterranean salad, and let's take, yes, we've got it mm -hmm. right there. And it's The delicious. finished product, mm -hmm. and then we all got to sample, That's right. you know, <laughs> was great. But it is so easy to grow these vegetables in and among your borders if you have no other place. We're talking about sunny borders right now, and we're talking about creating certain spaces within those mm -hmm. borders. Put a tomato in it. Right. Put a pepper or two in it. Uh, especially some basil, some of those easy ones. I love to cook with basil. But you know there's another one that I've always enjoyed, but I'm learning more, particularly from Taylor, mm -hmm. to use dill more, you know? Mm -hmm. So find that little extra spot, tuck it in, and then you can enjoy. Mm -hmm. By the way, on our website, yeah, you I was going to mention, we've got, we, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, if you go to our website, you can get the recipe. Actually, there's a couple of recipes up there, uh, some of the things that, that Taylor's created. The Mediterranean salad, if you go to our garden centers, when you go to the, the home page, go to our garden centers, and under gar our garden centers is our cafes, and under, and you click on that, and it'll have both both the two recipes that are up there right, right. now. And we try to change them up and that type of thing. But right. hope you'll stop by. You know, the website is, is a great source of information. So take advantage of that. Um, also on Facebook, she's been, Sharon has been posting these recipes and, and lots of things on Facebook. So that's been a lot of fun. We oh, hope, yes. I've, I've enjoyed join us on participating in right. all of that. And yeah. then I get to sample it. You that's know. right. Okay. <laughs> take a break. And then we will come back and talk about perennials, right? Yes, we okay. will. Welcome back to Maryfield's Gardening Advisor. It's so nice to have you with us today. We're talking about perennials, those plants that come back year after year, unless, of course, we have to kill one of them, you know. And you won't do that if you have good soil preparation in the beginning. I am a believer in that. And then know the requirements of those plants. Put the ones that like to be together. If they like a little moisture, plant those together. If they like to be high and dry, give them a high and dry spot. 
but where do we use some of these perennials and how do we attain that ability to have something in bloom throughout the growing season. I love this little picture. Number one, it has a wonderful little bench back here where you can sit down and enjoy the fruits of your labor. I do enjoy going out into the garden in the evening with that cup of tea, in the morning with that cup of coffee. There's a little walkway that's inviting through here, but there's a lot going on in this small space. It's pretty much a freestanding area, not necessarily a border planting, but there's structure in here. There's evergreens, as you can see back here, those that won't overgrow. There's little evergreens here, looks like it might be a little mugo pine, perhaps. And, and there's some uh, deciduous plants over in here, but nothing that's going to get huge and shade this section. This is the time of the year when there are tulips in bloom and I love to incorporate some bulbs in my borders. And the beauty of it is with perennials, they will come up and cover that ugly foliage that needs to turn yellow, don't cut it off. Okay, Here, here's another, a much larger garden and possibly could again be a freestanding one or a part of a border and you'll see there are evergreens as part of this garden too. And it looks like there's a small purple leaf um, deciduous plant back in here. What are the plants that are in here that are gonna take you into and through summer? There is Veronica, which is a lovely perennial. Okay, gets a huge flush of bloom. You can come in and cut that back. I use my Joyce chin scissors or my clippers to do that when the blooms are finished, and it will come back with another flush of bloom. There's Crocosmia back here, very similar to Glad's, but more graceful, that will, and comes in other than red now. There's so much impact from that. And then between the ornamental grasses, there's beautiful hardy geraniums. There are some really beautiful hardy geraniums out there, totally different than the pelargoniums that are annuals, okay? And in this picture, we have Shasta daisies. Again, you can keep those in bloom for a very long period of time by deadheading as they age. You can cut back several inches and then they'll sprout out below that and continue to bloom. So you can get longer bloom out of those if you do the deadhead. Look at this particular geranium in through here. I think it's called Roseanne. And it's one that blooms off and on through the entire summer. Again, you're seeing some of that crocosmia that's coming through there. So this is a spot in an area that is going to give you summer bloom right into fall. And in the next picture, we have another major player. The wonderful daisies. Here again is the Shasta daisy against the ornamental grasses. Ornamental grasses definitely play a role in the garden. And there's a size for everybody, little short ones or even those that get quite large if your space is large. And the Coreopsis, there are a number of different types of Coreopsis. Again, that at some point you can come in and just shear the, all the heads off or you can go and shear them individually if you don't have a lot. And so there is a good thing to deadheading with these perennials that will absolutely keep them in bloom for a longer period of time. And in the next picture, let's go to my own garden, okay? This is the garden by the road that you've seen many times and each year there's some variation here because I change it up. I trial new plants out in this area, but there are evergreens that are a background. We talked about the canna lilies. I just can't be without canna lilies. And they've all overwintered in the ground. I didn't dig them last year and they came through beautifully. As a matter of fact, many of my dahlias, here's, here's a, a coneflower that does beautifully. Now I have put into this, in this particular year, I've used some salvia that are not hardy necessarily. Indigo spires, there are several beautiful salvia. 
annuals and biennials will carry you constant bloom through the summer and so leave pockets for those things and I do and I will be putting in this weekend a lot of new ones in that area in fact the one that you can't depend upon to be totally perennial I think of it as a biennial is the Rudbeckia often called Gloriosa Daisy. I shake those seeds around and I'll get lots of babies from that. But what impact that has. Among all the things that are perennial here, that's going to give you bloom right into the fall. And dahlias. We just got into the Ferox location yesterday, these nice, beautiful, tall dahlias. I love them because they will stay with you until frost. Again, you need to do a little deadheading. You can see the seed heads of the Christophi allium here, which I leave in place because they're so interesting. And then there's the summer flocks in bloom. And out in that area and in just about every nook and cranny that I have, there's a clematis or clematis as you wish. They will take a lot of shade. They'll grow in full sun they will grow in part shade. I absolutely love them. And then you have the queens of the garden that are just going out now. Oh, actually, I have quite a few that are still in bloom. The bearded iris. They love to kind of stand by themselves because they like the hot sun, so you kind of keep the tall things away from them a little bit. When they come into bloom, I want to take a chair and sit down next to it and enjoy it. They're fleeting because we do think of them as queens of the garden. And the low-growing dianthus, wonderful. Here, here's another closer picture of that. The dianthus are wonderful for the front of the border. They are evergreen. They're even evident somewhat in the wintertime. Most of the perennials will die back to the ground over winter, although not all do that, and Dianthus is one of them. There are some beautiful selections, and they are so fragrant. So I highly recommend these plants in the front of your border. You can mix them with the thymes that you can use in the kitchen and, and have a beautiful edging to your borders. Another queen of the garden is the peony, and they are in bloom right now absolutely wonderful need to be a part of almost every garden. We're going to continue to talk about perennials. We will be back in just a moment. I do too. Such a you know? vibrant color. Oh. <laughs> and, and that's one reason they call these things the queens mm -hmm. of the garden, because they don't last forever, but oh my goodness, they're so worth it. And the beauty of the peony is that when they are finished blooming, mm -hmm. the foliage is still beautiful. Right. You mm -hmm. know, it's still green and it plays its role in the garden, so every, every garden that's big enough <laughs> needs a peony, yeah, okay? <laughs> and they're fragrant, so fragrant, yes. And you know, Peg, I forgot to mention at the, at the top of the show, we will be taking phone calls. Yes. Uh, we, about the last 20 minutes of the show, yeah. so stay tuned to, for that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I'd like to run through some pictures okay. mm -hmm. of some perennials to share with you, okay? Uh, some of them in, are growing in conjunction with others, and some are not. So let's just kind of roll through these pictures, okay? And in, in the first one coming up again within my own garden, because I have trialed so many things here, is where I have the sunshine. This, this is a border that has pretty good depth to it. It's at least 20 feet deep. And there's kind of, kind of a pathway through it, I guess. You know, <laughs> if I haven't decided that, oh, there's a space I can right. plant something <laughs> in, you know. And in this, there are, Car, there are daylilies, there are um, lavender, a lot of lavender because I've absolutely got to have lavender. There's poppies and there is the gloriosa daisies and you'll see another shot of that same garden at the same time a little closer up with those gloriosa daisies and some grasses in the background. 
and you can see another plant that is fun. It's one of those that we refer to as a see-through plant, Verbena bonariensis. And what does Maggie call it? <laughs> <laughs> Verbena on a stick. <laughs> <laughs> and it is. And you know, it's wonderful cutting for arranging, too. Mm -hmm. It is. This one is a have to have. It's uh, a butterfly weed. Asclepius is its proper name. And don't kill the caterpillars that you see on this because it's going to be your monarch butterfly, okay? Or maybe it's the swallowtail. I think it's the swallowtail, okay? <laughs> one of those good guys. Yeah, one of those guys you don't want to kill. That's right. And in the next picture, there is the white echinacea. There are so many echinaceas on the market now. Some are hardier than others, but they're all worth it. And in the very background, you can see the gold of coronation gold uh, achelia, which is yarrow, okay? And in the next one, you're gonna see another echinacea. The, the pinks to purple, well, it's not really a purple. Magenta is a better, better name for that, I mm -hmm. think, you know? Again, deadhead these, and they'll go on and on and on, and they make great cut flowers too. Right. And in behind this, of course, was the Shasta daisy, which is a great cut flower. They all bring the birds, the bees, and the butterflies, which I absolutely enjoy. And don't be afraid of those bumblebees or honeybees. They're, they're not aggressive, okay? And they're wonderful pollinators. But I love, love the echinacea. In the next picture, you can see this little bee is happy, happy, happy. When he flies away, he's going to have uh, pollen all over him, <laughs> you know. He accumulates all of that because it's sedum. A wonderful, wonderful plant. And I just really took the next picture out in the nursery with some of the new arrivals. I know, I, because I am at the Ferrex location uh, all of the time, almost all of the time, I see them when they come in and they're lined up in their rows and they're just incredible. Oh, it's very impressive. Yes, yeah. it is. And there again is a wonderful plant combination. Think of what it's going to look like next to its partner. That is Euphorbia again with the Gloriosa Daisy. And in, in this particular, okay, let's, oh, there more? we go. Let's mm -hmm. go to the next one, okay. Or was that the last one, Debbie? No, I think we've got one more. There we go. Okay. There we go. Okay, there we are with the close-up of that verbena bonaire, the verbena on a stick. <laughs> <laughs> I just always cry. Now, <laughs> that will seed itself around, by the way. I should warn you. But it's so easy to pull up. I only think of things as being obnoxious or invasive if they're hard to pull up. And there are a few of the perennials you have to be careful mm -hmm. with because they'll shoot down underground and pop up wherever. Right. And, and those are not so easy. Mm -hmm. You gotta really stay on top of it. But the ones that seed around, like Cleome and uh, poppies and so forth, I absolutely love. Good. They are great fillers. Mm -hmm. And you know, they happen to pop up sometimes in a better place than if That's I a good put point. them That's there. That's a good point. You know? mm -hmm. I was out, and I'm not a chemical person. I try and avoid chemicals. I want to give my plants good soil. I want to put the plants that want sunshine mm -hmm. in the sunshine, good drainage. I will do the soil additives that make it good drainage. But I do use Roundup judiciously. Mm -hmm. And I, I was out doing some of that. Uh, and that's yesterday. something you can really control. Well, Roundup, you, you've got it. You know, what you touch be, on is what it, is, well, is what it, it will, gets. Well, it will kill it. Yes, yes it will. Yes. But uh, yeah, there are a little poison ivy here and there. Right. And there are some things that, yeah, use judiciously, I do. But anytime you use chemicals, use them judiciously. Know what you're doing. Come in to the info area, to the plant clinics, and let them identify exactly what your problem is and what you need to do about it. 
That's right. And that's, then use it judiciously. That's what we're there for. I right. Mean, we are so proud of our, our staff of horticulturists really, and plant experts. It's a it's big just, plus. Absom absolutely. Yes. Okay. Going to take a quick break and come back with a little more on perennials. So stay tuned. Get the hummingbird. Welcome back. That's all a part of this garden. Everything that we've talked about this morning is in reality something that attracts the wildlife right. that we really like. Including ourselves, know. right? <laughs> <laughs> and, yes. ne and next week we're yes. actually going to be talking about birds and butterflies oh, yeah. as well. Okay. So that'll be good. That'll good. Be good. Well, that's a I, favorite topic. I wanted to mention, when you said all the things we've mentioned, we have talked about a lot of plants here and there were just too many to, to list and that type thing, but you can always go on our website maryfieldgardencenter.com under their TV show uh, because we list you know the outline that we use that has everything listed on there and then come Wednesday probably well no actually probably today depending on you know when we get it get it up and ready we put a copy of the show up as well so by Good. midweek but a lot okay. of times today uh, you'll Fine. see that so if you if you want to see what some of these plants are that we've talked about and how to spell them. <laughs> right. It's right there. Hopefully we got it right. And hopefully we got it right. <laughs> Let, let's run through some more of these favorites because uh, we can't always have every one of them in our garden, but you can put the ones you that work for you. <laughs> or, yeah, like me, you That's can try. Right, you can There's always room for one more, you know, <laughs> somehow or other. Well, we get in something new that I've just got to try. Mm -hmm. uh, the daisies. Are, everybody loves daisies. They're such a happy plant. This is Rudbeckia goldstrom. It's been around for a long time, and there's a good reason why it's been around for a long time, because it's very dependable. And I've discovered that this is one that will take some moisture, like some sunshine. The um, plant in front of it that isn't very clear, of course, is um, Joe Pieweed. Each one of these will take a, an area in the garden that stays a little bit on the moist side, not wet. There's a difference now between moist and wet. And in the next picture, there's another big player. There was a time when I really didn't care that much for um, all of the um, Gallardia, but I've changed my tune. <laughs> okay. Now I'm singing their praises because they're so beautiful. And look, I, I just love the little butterfly, okay? And they attract so many butterflies. And the next picture is one of the reasons that I like these plants, these Gallardia now. This is a really new cultivar called Arizona Sun. And if, if we can come back to the desk just for a second uh, from the pictures, I, I have another absolutely, I've got to look to see what the name is on this one. It's called Fanfare, because I hadn't seen it before. Incredibly beautiful, beautiful plant. Mm -hmm. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. Now, while you have the camera on this, I'm going to take these Joyce Chin scissors, which I love. We've been selling them for years, and for good reason, because they work. They are the things that I use when I go out to deadhead. And when I deadhead, I will go into this plant and see that there's a bud here. Now let's pretend that this bud is finished, that the flower is over. I'm going to snip that plant right out. Now that bud is going to take over. So that's what I, when I say deadhead, that's what I mean, okay? Uh, it, it doesn't take long if you don't have a huge garden. Right. If you've got as much as I do, it takes, it a, little takes a little while. It takes a little while. Okay. <laughs> so you have to dedicate uh, an hour a day, mm -hmm. uh, not a day. Right. In mine, a week, you yeah. know. One hour a week. But it to gives you an excuse that. to get out there and enjoy it. Uh, well, absolutely. And you know, I feel that way about watering too. Mm -hmm. I have so many containers, and every year I say, I'm not going to do that. And every year I fib. <laughs> <laughs> because there's always something new and mm -hmm. you want to create something different and you want to teach, you want to educate, you want to say these things go well together and you so but when I'm out there watering I'm enjoying it also okay it's not work for me I, I just enjoy communion with them in the next picture I'd like to share with you something that a lot of people don't know about it's the hardy hibiscus 
We know the tropical hibiscus, which won't live outdoors over winter. You have to bring it inside. This one you don't bring inside. Mine is just now coming up from the ground. They are late bloomers. Mm -hmm. They emerge <clears throat> late, but then they put on a spectacular show. Huge blossoms, beautiful for a long period of time, and this particular one is right next to a crepe myrtle of exactly the same color. In the following picture, there is salvia. Beautiful, perennial salvia. In the next picture, there are two different kinds of salvia. Totally wonderful. We, I believe there's a pink one, and it, there's one more picture mm -hmm. coming up. There we go. Absolutely beautiful salvias, lung blooming, deadhead, they bloom again, deadhead again, they bloom three times. Well, they're so striking when they're out in the, in the garden beds. Yes, yeah. they are. Yeah. They truly are. Now, Debbie, mm -hmm. if we have a moment, or mm -hmm. can we take a moment? Yeah. A tip that to me is vitally important because mosquitoes are attracted to mm -hmm. me. They love me and I don't love them at all. Okay. It's because you're sweet. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I use mosquito dunks mm -hmm. every year. They really Here's will the the kill Here's a the lot of... Put this together here. There's yeah. the dunks. Those There's the, the dunks. That's the bits. <laughs> All right, she's trying to keep me straight. It's a hard job. <laughs> I put the dunks in larger bits of water. We have a creek, mm -hmm. and when it dries down and there are pockets left, these dunks go in. That is one of the best mosquito controls you'll ever mm -hmm. get because the mosquitoes are going to come to that water, they're going to lay their larvae in it, and this kills it. And it's a natural material. I use it in my bird baths. I use the bits in the bird baths, okay? Mm -hmm. If you have running water, you don't have to worry about it. In my uh, pond with the waterfall, mm -hmm. I don't worry about it, okay? Because right. moving water isn't a problem. But I do have bowls of water that I may have a water plant in that has no moving water. Mm -hmm. And it is the best mosquito trap you can imagine. Oh, yeah. You go once a week, or at least every two weeks mm -hmm. and drop some of these bits in and it's great mosquito control. It may not kill all of them, but it cuts the numbers. That's great. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I can't be without these things. Good tip. Okay. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to take your phone calls. So if you have any questions, give us a call, 703-387-1046 and we'll be excited to talk to you in just a couple minutes. everybody, welcome back. We're taking your phone calls. So if you have any questions, 703-387-1046. Peggy, we have a caller on the line, Scott, who's calling from Frederick, Maryland. Hi, Scott. Good Hi, morning. How are you? Good, how are you? Okay, thank you. I just had a question, just a question regarding, uh, I think it's called black spot on uh, roses. Mm -hmm. um, I've noticed my roses are already covered with them, mm -hmm. and uh, I've, put, I've put stuff on them before. Um, and it didn't really seem to help at all, in fact. Um, is there anything else I can be doing um, naturally to help prevent this, or w what would you recommend to, to help with this problem? For the ro uh, spy, yes. Unfortunately, a lot of our hybrid roses are very susceptible to black spot, and we've so had some perfect weather for that. There are some combined um, sprays that you can use and some actually that you can work into the ground and I teasingly always tease David Yost I said as far as the show is concerned I'm going to talk about the beauty and what you put together and <laughs> what you use for it and how to grow it well so that you don't have a problem and then he's going to talk about the beast okay so I am going to ask you to call our plant clinic uh, from Frederick. Hey, it's a nice drive over here. Talk to some of the Rosarians at the, at the, the Rose, uh, show. Rose Show. Perfect you know? opportunity. It's, it's a great, or call the plant clinic. 
I try not to keep up with all those latest <laughs> <laughs> latest sprays, you know, mm -hmm. because uh, I'd have to be perfectly honest with you. I only have a few rose bushes and I don't spray them. And, and they would never win anything <laughs> in a flower show. But um, they're still attractive, but there are many things that you can do. But I will ask you to call the plant clinic and get those uh, recommendations from them, or as I said, invite you to the Rose Show. Not a good answer for you, was it? Okay, well, thank you, though. <laughs> thank yeah. you. Have a great weekend, Scott. Thank Take you. care. Bye-bye. Okay, let's see our next caller. I believe it's Claude, who's calling from D.C., is that correct? Hi. Hi, good morning. how are you? I'm well, how are you? Good. I saw you discuss the mosquito dunks and the mosquito bits, and yes. I don't have a lot of standing water or any really in my yard, but I have quite a mosquito problem. We were just eaten alive last year. Okay. So is there anything else I can plant or spray that will work to control the mosquito population? There are some things that you can use as a mosquito control, and they are chemical sprays, and I have used them. The unfortunate thing that I discovered was you kill all of the good bugs along with the bad ones. And so I try to avoid that. Okay, you say you have no standing water. Create some containers. Uh, buy some containers that hold water. Put a pretty water plant in it. And then every week put a few of these dunks in. Why am I telling you to do that? Because it will attract the mosquitoes. Put out a bird bath or two, okay? You are giving them a place to breed. You are putting the dunks in and you're killing more a lot of mosquitoes organically, okay? Try it, Claude. See if it helps. It'll I'll cut the numbers quite a bit, okay? Thank you so much. I hope that helps. Mm -hmm. Something different gives you a new, a new look, too. Right. <laughs> Take right. care. Okay, let's see. Francis is calling from Springfield. Hi, Francis. Hi, how are you? Good, Good morning. Good morning. Um, I have a vegetable garden, and I keep putting in little seedlings of corn that I've grown, and I plant them when they're three to four inches high. Mm -hmm. and something during the middle of the night is plucking them out of the garden. What mm -hmm. could I use to eliminate that? Sometimes it's, it's the birds, actually, that will go after corn, particularly. We have a product at the garden center called Frost Cloth. It is a very thin material through which the sun and the water goes, and if you buy some sod pins, which look like a huge hairpin, right. and, and you leave it loose so that this thing can grow, you can peg it on both sides with this, and then the bugs and the birds can't get to it until oh. it's tall enough that they will not bother it. That is the organic way to do it, is the best way to do it because it's very difficult to repel the birds. Sometimes you can put a string up at a certain height and, and tie tapes or put a little windmills into uh, pinwheels into it and that'll keep them away, but that is the foolproof way to do it. Okay, It's thank called you. frost cloth. Frost cloth, okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Okay, thank you, Francis, and good luck. All thank right. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Okay, let's see. Jean is calling from Indian Head, Maryland. Hi, Jean. Hi, how are you? Good, and you? Just wonderful. I love your show. I'm a religious watcher. Oh, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> What's your question today? Uh, deadheading. Dianthus, Lithodora, and Creeping Phlox. Yes or no? Um... The creeping phlox, there's no point worrying about. That's the one that is very much a ground cover, and it has its greatest bloom in the early spring, and it's over. Okay, you oh. can certainly deadhead that to get rid of those ugly blooms and have the beautiful green underneath. It makes a beautiful green mat. Okay. The, the lithodora, I, I dashed out into the garden this morning and, and just picked up. This is one thing that I love about the long days. I can actually mm -hmm. see a little sunshine before yeah. I leave the house. And the lavender's coming yeah. into bloom now. This is a plant that I didn't mention but can't be without. 
And cool. and so I literally deadheaded a small section of this. I have accumulated quite a bit of it. And let me turn this tip up here. I've cut it just where it meets the major plant and snipped it again with my Joyce Chin scissors. I'm going to enjoy this lavender. I could put it in water, but I could just let it dry. Now, just below where I cut it, it is going to send out new shoots, and those shoots will bloom later in the summer. So oh. that is where you deadhead. And let me again take another. I'm going to explain. If, if again, James, if you can come in on that camera close with this. If you deadhead just beneath where the flower is finished and where there is a new shoot coming, you snip there, you'll have new blooms coming out from that. Oh. Now, do you have to be that exact? No, you don't. That's <laughs> the ideal way to do it. Just go out there and get those blooms off, all right? At Thank some you. point, you'll just do it automatically, okay? okay? Jean, thanks so much. We've got to take and a break. And what about the dianthus? Uh, dianthus, you can just shear back, and they'll come back into bloom. Just shear it and, and just spray Just shear it best. back, yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a great weekend. You We're going to take a quick break and be right back. Color, color, color. That's what it's all about. And please come by the nursery because uh, yeah. it is spectacular with color right well, now. Well, there it's is. Gorgeous. There is a lot there. Oh. And, and now's the time to get some of those intermediate plants in. In fact, reach over really quickly and snip one of those buddleia. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is another incredibly beautiful plant. I, I just love buddleia. Mm -hmm. And boy, does that bring mm -hmm. the, the birds, butterflies. the bees, butterflies. and the butterflies. <laughs> Oof. Yep. Yummy. Okay, we've got time for a couple more callers, so let's see. Uh, Richard is calling from Fairfax. Hi, Richard. Good morning. Good morning, Richard. How are you? Better than I deserve. How about you? <laughs> I like, I like that. that. <laughs> <laughs> Could be the case for a lot of That's us. That's right. <laughs> what can we do for you today? Just a curiosity question. Mm -hmm. Yes. Chrysler Imperial. Yes. That's an oldie. Jackson Perk. Oh, it's a gorgeous one, though. A golden oldie. Yes, it is. I had one. Well, first, Mom had one on the fence between our upper yard, between the driveway and the yard. Mm -hmm. Well, Dad's overseas, so I'm number one son. Had to shovel the drive. Right. I'm throwing it out of the driveway area and onto the fence. Not paying attention to any rows on the fence line because it's dormant. Right. Mom runs out the backyard after there's a big pile of snow there, and brothers and sisters got their sleds getting on that pile of snow that made the backyard hill that much higher. Right. Get off of there! You're going to kill my rose! <laughs> we all turned around and looked at her. What's she talking about? There are no roses out this time of year. <laughs> but the next summer, she had the most gorgeous roses on that bush. <laughs> It's because she shared her bush with her children, for goodness <laughs> sakes. <laughs> That's fa it's amazing what they'll take, you know, because you're going to be cutting that rose bush back in the spring anyway. Now, granted, you certainly could have killed it, you know. But no, but the runners never even touched it. The snow was that high on it. Wow. Right, absolutely. And but I had a double theory on it. What was that? One, it, there was so much cold around it, it killed anything that was in it, in, infesting it. <laughs> well, snow cover is a wonderful protectant. It really is. Not that it killed black spot, okay? But okay. Chrysler... And the other one was, it, the snow traps all your trace minerals in the atmosphere. Well, this is true. And but it acted like a trickle charge as it melted. Oh, nice. Chrysler mm -hmm. Imperial is and was a very strong growing rose. When I grew up, my mother was quite the rose grower, and the town, Thomasville, Georgia, near me, had one of the most incredible rose festivals anywhere. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. It was a magnificent thing, and they're still having it, you know, mm -hmm. so um, I remember when the Peace Rose won the, the mm -hmm. show. I remember Chrysler Imperial. I'm really telling you my, you know, <laughs> it doesn't really matter, but incredible roses. Mm -hmm. Chrysler Imperial was a standout. Great. So, 
Richard, it was a tough rose. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> Thank so you much. for calling and sharing. Well, before you run, just real quick, mm -hmm. the same rose bush I planted here, and the darn leaves look like lace. Don't know what got into them. I said, mm. all right, this will either kill you or cure you. There you go. <laughs> I got it wet with some water yes. and then took the ash, cold ash, out of the barbecue grill Ooh. from the charcoal <laughs> and just shook over top of it like mm -hmm. snow. Okay. Two days later, it looked like a brand new rose wow. bush. <laughs> oh, yeah, it probably killed everything inside. <laughs> but the leaves just came right back, not a Good. whole one, one of them. Fantastic. Oh, well, great. you did kill those particular bugs that were doing the job, and fortunately, the charcoal didn't kill the rose. Yep. You know? <laughs> Thank you. That was a fun spot, Richard. Thank, Thank you, you for so calling. Much. Have a great week. Stop by the rose show today if you get a chance. Yes. And unfortunately, we have less than a minute left, so Al Al Albin, who was calling from Laurel, if you'll stay on the line, uh, Diane will get your number and we can we can right. get back with you. He had a question about bearded mm -hmm. iris. I'm not sure what well, the question was. Well, and there are lovely, lovely <coughs> things right now, but uh, I just didn't have the chance or didn't remember to say, grab your hat, mm -hmm. grab your gloves, get yourself a pair of Joyce Chin scissors because I love them. I can't be without them when mm -hmm. I'm deadheading at this time of the year. And you do need to protect yourself from the sun when you're out uh, to do uh, some a nice hat. I don't know that a cap gets it, but a right. hat is a good thing. Right. And, and go get your sun That's spray. Great. Well, yes. great ideas today. Thank you so much. <laughs> Next week, uh, Robert Woodman, who you all have seen before, oh, so uh, usually at our Gainesville location, is going to be on. He's going to be talking about attracting birds birds and butterflies with a lot of native plants. So right. Robert great. is great. He is. <laughs> so have a great week. Stop by the Rose Show. Come out and see us at the Garden Center. And we'll see you next time.